All right. We're well into this one here, okay? We've slowly been cutting our way into it until we can get this gear to fit just exactly the way we want it to. Getting closer, getting closer. Okay, a little too tight yet. We got her to go in. Now we want to loosen it up just a little. Say that's going to be pretty close. Yep. See that? That's just about perfect. Right about there. If you can see that or not. But that's about the right amount of shake that you want right there. And that's it. That's almost perfect. Now we're not done yet. But we're getting closer. Okay. Now that we're this far. We now have everything broached out. And everything fits. Next step is we want to harden the inside of the bushings. Now they're already hard. This is a very good steel using bronze over brass. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with brass. Bronze is better. This is a smoothing brooch. What this will do is this will harden the inside of the bushing. After we've already gone in, we take this, put a little bit of oil on it, and then we're going to carefully round it out until we smooth the inside of the bushing. If there's any burrs left over from the original brooch, it's going to remove those. It's going to polish the inside of the bushing and it's going to harden it at the same time, adding life to the bushing. Now we're going to do that on all of these and when we're done with that, we're going to go over here and uh, we're going to use these tools here. What these are, if you notice, they got small round ends on them. Now what that's going to do is it's going to create an oil cup. It's going to cut a, it's going to dish or cut a dish into the top of the bushing. It's going to create an oil cup, so when you oil it, oil will stay there. So we'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. Okay, we've just finished with that. Now, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be doing a partial assembly, which we've started doing here. We're going to use just the pieces that we've worked on. All right, and the reason we're going to do that is we want to make sure that everything lines up exactly the way we want. Check end shake and side shake and make sure that it's perfect. Because if it's not, we're going to pull out the bushing and redo the bushing. Very common that we end up with one, maybe even two, that we end up redoing. Because it has to be perfect, okay? Now, when we're all done with this, what we're going to do is unassemble it. And we're going to put on what I call the presidential polish. Now, that's a secret, and I'm not going to tell you what we do. But this thing is going to shine like beyond brand new okay everything's gonna just it's gonna hurt your eyes when the sun hits it so I'm not gonna tell you my secret but you'll see it just before it goes in the cleaner when we're done it's gonna get cleaned and rinsed again and then we'll be putting it together okay here we are in the first phase of the cleaning is done or actually technically it's the second phase because now that we've got the parts in here they've been polished and cleaned as you can see here they are Notice how much shinier they are already, and we're not even done. It has to go over in this machine yet. Uh, we're going to take compressed air, spray this off, move them over here, and then you'll see them when we make the next step. All right, now what you're looking at is the back plate of the movement. Um, we've polished it up, and we'd like it to keep that appearance. So we've taken and pegged all the different bushings, all the, the holes on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a lacquer on this. All right, put a clear lacquer on it using a spray. And it's going to go on like this, very thin coats, very little at a time. And what this is going to do is it's slowly going to build up to a nice thin plastic coat over it, and it will keep it from tarnishing. Now, all brass darkens with age, but with this, it's going to last a lot longer, and you'll be able to enjoy the beauty of the clock. This is another step we do in, in what I call the, the presidential repair. You'll, we're not done yet, though. We're not done yet. You'll love it when it's finished. Okay, what you see here is one of the main springs. We are now ready to wind it up. We've greased it, and we have to get greased thoroughly throughout the straps. We're going to wind her up and get her ready for installation. This is a special mainspring winder called the Webster. And what this does, it allows us to wind the spring up. We're going to wind it up and let it down a couple of times, and that's going to spread the grease thoroughly throughout the straps. Now, it's important that these wind up nice and straight, okay? And that's why you wear a glove. There's that. Now we're going to let it down.
You can see the grease in between the straps there. She's spraying together very nicely. Now we're going to wind her up again. Now we're going to lock it down with a mainspring lock. Got her just about ready. Okay, lock in place and all set for installation in the clock. See you at the clock. Okay, now we are finally at a point where we can start to assemble the clock. We've got our lacquered plates here and here. These are the springs that we just uh, greased up and gotten ready to go. And these are the parts. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, so I don't recommend that uh, you try this yourself. Or if you do want to learn clock repair, I recommend that you start on something that if it gets wrecked, again, you're okay with that. You know, plan on throwing it away. Matter of fact, plan on throwing your first 10 away. I strongly suggest that you do that. Uh, there is, however, a method to assembling these, and it's from biggest to smallest. Whatever the biggest parts are, they're normally the parts that fit in first, with the smallest parts going in thereafter. Now I could probably do this in my sleep, but I'll keep my eyes open because I'm sure the customer would appreciate it better. So I will finish assembling this, and then when I'm done, we'll turn the camera back on and get a good look at how she looks completely assembled. All right. Um, by the way, the lacquer turned out perfect, and these plates, now that they're lacquered, should not tarnish for, oh, probably 10 to 15 years before they even start to tarnish, which is exactly what you want. Um, it, it doesn't add any life to the clock, but it certainly adds quite a bit of looks. So, as you can see, it is a very nice looking piece. We'll see you again when it's finished. All right, we're a little closer here now. As you can see, everything is exactly where it needs to go. The only part that we have yet to put on has to do with the time adjustment. Now, I've noticed a couple of spots here that need some adjusting. We may have to pull it apart once, maybe twice. So, I'm going to be using a couple of tools here to go through a period of adjusting at this point until we get everything working right. Some of the things right now on this particular one, which are quite common, is that this locking lever is not locking exactly the way that it should, and we don't have this gear lined up exactly right to shut off on time. So we're going to make those series of adjustments, and then we'll be ready to oil it. All right, now what we're ready to do is start oiling. We've taken the keepers off the mainspring, so we're all set there. And this is clock oil number 859. Now this is what a lot of us use if you take a look at the label there. And uh, it's a very expensive oil. This little bottle here is around $65. And it takes very little oil. And this is a synthetic clock oil. Years ago they used to use whale oil to oil clocks. Now obviously with whaling and the laws and such uh, that was outlawed. And with the advent of uh, many different synthetics over the past few years they came out with clock oil number 859 about 16 years ago and it's been widely used by clockmakers across the United States. Considered to be one of the finest synthetics out there. Long life. Uh, you can easily go two or three or even four years before you have to re-oil the movement with the use of it. Um, so, and we're going to use these small oilers here, and these are called dip oilers. Okay? And if you, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the end is a little tiny flat end. And uh, as we dip the, the, the dip oiler in the end of the oil, in the 859 oil, a little bit of oil drains to the end of the dip oiler. Okay, then we're going to take that and we're going to touch it to the different bushings that we've added. And we're going to oil each one of these with just the right amount of oil. Now what's the right amount of oil? Well, uh, if the oil runs, obviously it's too much and, and, uh, and too little isn't good either. Uh, that's really a judgment call on the clockmaker. But uh, there is an illustration that shows how much oil is too much and how much oil is too little. Um, so this will take us a few minutes, maybe 20 minutes, to go through and oil it properly, and then we'll be ready to test run it.